Welcome to the final whistle. A roundup of football's best moments over the course of last week. Monday and in the aftermath of Manchester United's 2-1 loss to Brighton, the United board hit the panic button. A bid had gone in place for a 33-year-old Marco Anortovic and a deal was agreed with Juventus for castaway Adrian Rabiot with personal terms yet to be agreed. If the Manchester United dressing room was bad last year God knows what it will be like next year with these additions. Manchester United really were trying to build a SBC team here. Rumour has it they were ready to trade it for a certain Frankie de Jong. However United quickly moved away from Marnortovic after complaints from the fans but the Rabio deal is still set to go ahead and stats fans rejoice with Rabiot's talents shown here. And this will be Ronaldo's reaction when he spots Rabio in training. Also in the aftermath of Saturday was the fall of Zuma as he got a taste of his own medicine. Tuesday was the day football fans were shown the horror of Chelsea's Goulibaly chant. Horrendous I know, this is the only Koulibaly chant Chelsea fans should be singing. Kaladu Koulibaly, destroys Aguero and Vardy, Firmino, Kane and Sani, get out my way don't try me. You Keeping on Chelsea and Timo Werner left Chelsea to return to RB Leipzig for half the price Chelsea played leaving Kai Havertz as the only striker at the club. This number 9 curse is really hitting Chelsea hard. Finally on Tuesday we have a throwback to this corker of a video. Manchester United. Oh. And who's, who's your favourite player? None of them. They're all rubbish. <laughs> Wednesday and a movement is growing on Twitter as some Manchester United fans prepare to boycott entering Old Trafford in their next game against Liverpool. Although that didn't happen last season but instead of the Glazers causing it wasn't it Mo Salah. If the club ever gets new owners then I have a suggestion for the first thing to fix. Over to Manchester City and Pep Guardiola has no respect for fantasy football players. Holland is also receiving some love on his socials after his impressive brace. And after the McTominay Rabio stats here's another fun stat. Jadon Sancho has had more managers at Manchester United than goals. 72 million ladies and gentlemen. Halfway through the weekend an interesting fact was broken that in 1890 the fattest man was large enough to be considered a freak show in the circus rumor has it he now plays up front for Inter. Also a big question was asked on Harry Kane because yes he can play multiple sports but can he say red lorry yellow lorry? Let's go! BT made their Champions League predictions although they all seem to have forgotten about the Yaya Toure curse. Before Messi and Ronaldo were both bodied as Hansi Flick made this statement and Florentino Perez made this one. Marcus Rashford was also linked to a move to PSG, a move that will be music to the ears of French kids. Friday was the day of Nick Pope as a poll from Burger King asking whether you would prefer a tomato or gherkin in a burger was hijacked by a Newcastle fan group and led to this. It was also the day for the reaction to the Ballon d'Or nominations where there were some interesting picks but notable for the first time since 2005 Lionel Messi was not part of the top 30 and Ronaldo was leaving his fans over the moon. Saturday was a day many Premier League games occurred but one stuck out as Manchester United lost 4-0 to Brentford leaving them bottom of the Premier League. All that pre-season hype at the start of the season is really over now and the Twitter admins were having a field day again. Rival fans are bathing in their failure although it doesn't get to many Manchester United fans as they are already so far down. 
Lisandro Martinez got a score to represent his height and it doesn't look any better for Manchester United fans with Liverpool next and if they were kicking off a lot last game the next one could be hell. Even the Wolfsburg Twitter admin was getting in on the act. This will be Manchester United when they score a late consolation goal against Liverpool next Monday. Well, Dan James gets a consolation back. Don't celebrate it. Don't, don't, what are you doing? We're not doing the dance. We're not doing the, what are we doing? We're losing 6-1. We're losing 6-1. What are you doing? Here are the rest of the results of the day in which Gabriel Jesus had a stroma delighting FPL fans across the world. Sunday and we start with the aftermath of the United match where Eric Ten Hag had the United players running the extra distance as a punishment and Ten Hag was praying for new signings. But over to the Sunday games where we had a corker as Chelsea faced off against Tottenham sparking wild scenes at the end of the game in which both Conti and Tuchel got sent off. This mainly centred around the controversy of Anthony Taylor and his decisions sparking a petition from Chelsea fans to ban him from referring Chelsea games. But it was refreshing to see some rivalry between the clubs unlike the one between Klopp and Guardiola, even Jake Paul was enjoying the event. It also looks like Sterling is having an effect on the stress levels of Tuchel already and Kulewski didn't look the same player without massive space to move into. To end the week I've got a helping prompt of how to say thank you in Spanish. De nada. And that wraps up the final whistle. What was the best moment of the week? Comment down below and while you're down there leave a like, subscribe and goodbye.